All right. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started tonight because it is 6.30, and uh, we, we do have a good... I, I, I enjoy this chapter. Um, I feel like it's getting a bit more practical uh, in some things. And, uh, you know, even though what, what, what I find... Because a few people have asked me, hey, are we going <laughs> to keep doing this uh, until we finish? And, and I was like, you know, I don't know, you know... Um, and then others, others are like, well, I don't really struggle with depression, so it's not really pertinent to me. Well, I mean, okay, but there's others around you that do, and, and it's good to be able to communicate, to communicate with them. Uh, and, uh, and then what I have found, though, really here lately is just this is just some good, good practical advice for living, uh, especially in the past couple chapters. And so let's first turn to Matthew chapter 14. And tonight is about faith again. And, um, you know, and we talked about faith last week. And I'll remind you of the really, I thought, really good definition that uh, Lloyd-Jones gave us. What did he say? Faith is what? It's the refusal to, anybody remember? Faith is the refusal to, starts with a P. Ends with an anic. Yeah, panic, right? <laughs> yeah, faith is a refusal to panic. And so uh, we're going to kind of continue that theme tonight with Peter uh, stepping out onto the, onto the waves, walking a little bit, and then realizing, uh, what? <laughs> what to do? And so anyway, let's read that. Uh, Matthew 14. Uh, verse 22 and following. Immediately he, Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So this is right after the feeding of the 5,000. Okay? And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And uh, I don't know what your translation says, but in one translation today, um, the old Holman Christian Standard Bible that I still like to read from time to time, um, that's not in print anymore, they said like they said it was over a mile away. Okay, uh, that it was like the only. Um, it was like the only translation I could find that said something like that. In the original language, it was like mini stadia, which is stadia is like, is that what it says? Or, yeah, mini stadia. A stadion was about 607 feet or close to 200 meters. All right, so many of them. How many is many? I don't know, but more than a few. And so it, it was a long ways away, or maybe a kilometer, maybe a mile. Who knows? All right, but... But that means Jesus walked, he walked on the water for a good ways. Isn't that interesting? I mean, you, you kind of use, when you think about this story, it's like, ah, he walked 20 feet. No, he walked. He walked a good ways. So, um, all right, verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. That's about 3 a.m., all right? But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And too bad Jimmy's not here. Maybe if he watches it, he'll appreciate it. But um, when Jesus says, it is I, in the original language, um, it's, I don't like doing this, but it's Wednesday night, so I'll do it. It's ego a me, which is, ego is I, and a me is I am. And so, if you, if, you know, there's, there's just a, you know, John, when you read the Gospel of John, when Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am, that's the same Greek. He, he, he says, a me there, or ego a me. And so um, I just want to point that out. You know, it is I, in the original Greek, ego a me, it's, it's a pointer to Jesus's. I mean, if walking on water wasn't enough, right, he says, hey, don't fear, I am. You see what I'm saying? 
right? So I think there's a, there's, it's communi- Matthew's communicating something here by saying that, in addition to just Jesus walking on the water. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, all right, probably the wind waves, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the, bur- in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. I mean, that's just a powerful, powerful text. I may have to preach that one day, all right? So um, it, it's, just, it's just a good, fun text. And so what, what Lloyd-Jones is, is doing with this text um, well, he, he just he kind of brings out several principles here and, and for our lives, all right? And so um, the first one is this, all right? He says, Peter got into trouble. So Peter, he starts off well, all right? He, he, he you know, he... He gets into the water, he starts walking, you know, but then all of a sudden he, he's crying out to be saved. So he doesn't end well, but he starts off well. But Peter got into trouble and became unhappy and frightened and desperate. Why? And it's, and it's because of having little faith which led to doubt, right? Having little faith that led to doubt. And so this chapter is about faith, about dealing with doubts. And, of course, when, our, when we doubt, it can lead us into spiritual depression. Um, I mean, you just, I'm sure you know people that, uh, I mean, kind of like your friend that you were just telling us about. Well, yeah, sorry, I forgot this is being recorded. Um, but, you know, he, he's having all these doubts. You know, how can God be good, blah, 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 blah. And, and it's just, it eats away at your soul, you know. Maybe he may be hiding it, but eventually it will. And so, anyway, and it can do the same thing to us. Um, so the first thing, the first thing that uh, Louis Jones starts out with is talking about temper, temperament again. And I think this is always a good reminder that we all have different personalities, we all have different temperaments, different constitutions, and and, and these things can can affect us in certain ways. And he talks about Peter's temperament. Uh, anybody remember, remember what he called it? Uh, just the, oh, he just calls it the Peter mentality. All right. And um, how did he, if you read it, how did he explain Peter's mentality? Anybody know? About always jumping. Yeah, he was. Always, you know, he's the first to do everything. Right. He was the first to jump in, eager, enthusiastic. A bit impulsive, maybe, uh, but this thing would lead him to trouble. In fact, he says here, and this is a good question for us. <clears throat> he says we all tend to fail ultimately at our strongest point. In other words, our strengths can kind of they can kind of backfire on us if they're not if we're not careful. Any, any, you think about that? Any thoughts on that? We all tend to fail ultimately at our strongest point. And his example here is is Peter who is, he's the first to jump in, he, he's bold, he's brave, he, he, he doesn't mind speaking his mind, um, but this can get him into trouble too. And of course, a couple, we have our example in scripture today, but when, um, um, you know, Jesus is talking about his death, what, is, what does Peter say? Uh, no, I, you, huh? Yeah, yeah, and hey, and I'm not going to run away from you, <laughs> And Jesus, or like, no, I think Peter says, hey, I'm going to die. They would just say, I'm going to die for you, right? Or whatever. And, and Jesus is like, hey, you know, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And so, uh, anyway, but. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so his, his, 
one of his better characteristics kind of led him into a problem. All right, so a couple things to consider here. He says concerning, he gives us some points about dealing with doubt, all right? Um, or, or just how, what, what is doubt? How does doubt approach us in our lives? Because this was Peter's problem. Started out well, he got into the waves, right? He saw the wind and the waves, and he began to doubt, and he began to sink. And so he cries out, Jesus saves me. And so what are some things we can keep in mind about doubting? And he says this. The first thing is uh, we ourselves sometimes produce our own doubts, right? We can sometimes produce our own doubts. Uh, Peter produced his own doubts by looking at the waves. And, And he says this. He says, let us be careful here. We often lead ourselves into depression. We lead ourselves into doubts by dabbling with certain things which should be avoided. I am referring to certain types of literature. I mean, TV, for us, maybe TV shows. I know, I know if, because, um, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, I like science fiction and... Um, I don't know about fantasy. I'm not really, but I like historical things. And so there was a History Channel show years ago called Vikings. And I mean, I started watching it, and it was, I think I was sick. I wasn't married. So all I could, you know, it's just, you just sit on your couch and just watch TV, right, when you're sick. And I, and I started, so not only was I sick, but I started watching this show, and it became, it, it was a pretty good show because it, it, uh, I mean, it was pretty violent, but um, it was explicitly pagan because it was the Vikings and explicitly Christian. Like, you know, when you're watching shows, history, it really bothers me. You're watching a show about England and they're just talking about God, this vague idea of God, but they don't ever mention Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? Really bothers me when history stuff does that because that's, you know, but but this show explicitly talked about Christ and and. He died and rose again, right? And the pagans were worshiping Odin, Thor, and all the Norse false gods. Um, and um, in fact, in fact, it was interesting. One of the later seasons, uh, one of the one of the Vikings was like, "Well, I've seen." I've, he told one of the Christian soldiers, "I've seen Odin or whatever." And the Christian soldier was like, "You saw a demon," which that is. Probably very biblically true statement. I don't. I don't know who the writers were, but they, they kind of got the they got the conflict between paganism and Christianity in history. Anyways, the whole point of this was, if you even if you watch too much of that, it can like impact you because of because of the heaviness of it, right? And so 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 I have to be careful sometimes what I watch because of the heaviness of it. Um, you know, not that it would lead me to lead me to doubt my faith, but it, but it can certainly cause us mental anxiety and stress and concerns and, and questions that we wouldn't have had if we had just watched, you know, some game show, right? You see what I'm saying, you know? And, uh, you know, the same thing with science fiction. But, um, and so I thought that's good. You know, don't, don't, don't consume things that's going to cause you to doubt, right? Um, And probably, you know, uh, I'll be discreet here, but just with what we talked about earlier, uh, you know, if if we have friends that, you know, we're trying to share Christ with, but they are, but they are just, you know, they're just lobbing these bombs at us, uh, and it's, it's caught, and, and we, it's causing us struggles, we'll say that. It, there's nothing wrong in taking a step back, right, and saying, you know, I, I, gotta, I, I can't keep taking these bombs. God, you, you let somebody else deal with them for a while, you know. So, that, so just some things to kind of consider there. Um, all right, well, but the next thing he says, doubts are not incompatible with our faith. Um, though you, so in other words, you're going to have doubts, uh, even though you have faith, right, uh, the rest of your life. He says, read the lives of some of the greatest saints, and, and they've had doubts, 
right? Um, and um, he says, you may have doubts and you still have faith, a weak faith. So if you're struggling with doubts or know people that are, it doesn't mean their, their faith is false. It just means they have a weak one or, or, or weak at that time. So um, then he says this, another principle. If doubts are controlling us, it is an indication of a weak faith. All right, so we're all going to have these doubts that come into our mind, and we can battle down, and we can wrestle with. But but if those doubts really start to control us, then we then our faith is weak. Um, and so he says, doubts will attack us, but that does not mean that we are to allow them to master us. We must never allow that. Thoughts on that? Doubts will attack us, but we must never allow them to master us. We must never allow that. And that's a, you know, that's a great example for kind of how we can practically think about this uh, because if you let that doubt control you, it, it can lead to depression, right? It can lead to just anxiety. Um, and so you have to battle that, right? You have to not allow it to control you when that doubt sneaks in. That's a great example. Anything else? We have to take our thoughts captivity. Yeah, you know, take our thoughts captive, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if it's there, I mean, the immediate, the immediate response would be to pray, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, give it up. I mean, I know, and you may have to do that three mm-hmm. times a day, but there, if there's nothing you can do about it, yeah. What, what, what can you do? Right. It's just going to, you know, it can make you ill. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's good. What's going on here? My thing fell off. Yes. Take him captive. Good. All right. Good. 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 All right, so what is the antidote, right? What is the medicine for doubt, uh, for, those, for those doubts that come in? Um, and doubts that, again, that we're, we're, we don't ever want to kind of forget the whole main subject, right? But, but doubts can depress us and cause anxiety. So uh, we're, we're talking about how can we avoid the anxiety and the, and the spiritual depression, um, caused by doubts, all right? So what's the medicine? And, and the medicine is to have a great faith, or like Karen just said, taking your thoughts captive. Uh, what are the characteristics of this great faith? Um, he says, first, it is this. It is a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and his power with a steady trust and confidence in that. I mean, it's a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, his power, with a steady trust and confidence in that. Um, well, a lot of times we try to tackle things without really, you know, I mean, you know, people may say, well, I'm not, I don't have a problem with depression, but when we try to tackle things without the power, and without, without knowing Jesus, without having that intimate relationship with him, we're going to fail. Yeah. You know, we're going to, I mean, we're, 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 we're not going to succeed overcoming you know how do you trust someone when you don't know them yeah you know you may profess them as your savior but if anything i get out of this study from lloyd jones is that we can't be lazy 
Yeah. We have to be proactive mm -hmm. and, and not and working out our salvation not by works. Yeah. We have to do something. We right. can't expect God just to say, "Okay, just come down and do everything." Right. We have a responsibility. Right. You know, to get up out of that mess and say, "That's not how I'm made. That's not why." Yeah. I'm made. That's. Uh, yeah, to kind of pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and get out of that mess. That is a um, that is a message that's really needed for for today's culture um, because one of the things going on in our culture right now is this idea that everybody's a, that everybody's a victim, right? Uh, the whole "woe is me." Um, we need the government to save us. Um, you know, it, if everybody's always a victim held down by the man or whatever, then, then governments, a, a wicked government loves that because now they can be the God and the Savior, even though they don't, they, they just, they want to enslave, not save. So, but that, but that is one thing going on right now is just the, I don't know, just Yeah, go check it on that, please. Yeah. Um, you know, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But, yeah, yeah, th this book is good for that, that it's, that it's, it's hard work. Fa you know, faith, I mean, it, it, we, we have to work hard at, at, at the things of God. Yeah. Or, yes, it, we don't. We, right. We don't, we don't grow in Christ's likeness just by being passive. It's hard work. It's scripture reading. It's memorization. It's meditating. It's prayer. Uh, it's going to church. It's serving. You know, it. Um, it's hard work. Um, all right. Next. So yeah, we're talking about what is the antidote for doubts that cause depression. Uh, the, the antidote is great faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, remember Peter. He says this. I do want to mention this. When Peter says, you know, basically, hey, if it's you, Lord, command me to walk, uh, you know, a lot of times we read those if statements as kind of doubtful, but that's not the case here. Actually, Peter is demonstrating uh, good faith, right, by, by, you know, if it's Jesus walking on the water, then I can, I can get out on, these, on this water and walk. Like that's the, I mean, he's putting faith in Christ there. So that's not, a, that's not a poor statement. It's actually a really good statement. It's an indication of true faith, all right? He believed in the Lord and his power and in his person and in his ability. Um, he, just, he, just got, he just had a second thought after he took that initial step of faith, right? And then he began to, he began to sink. Um, anyway, all right. Um, so... Again, and, and we kind of just mentioned this, all right, about the, the hard work of the Christian life. But he says this, the great antidote to spiritual depression is the knowledge of biblical doctrine, right? The knowledge of biblical doctrine, uh, to know the things of God. And, and Because when we know the things of God and we know what the Bible says, then we can process all the junk that we are seeing all the junk flowing through our minds. But if all we know is John 3, 16, and, and Jesus loves me, this I know, I mean, we, we're, we're going to struggle. Um, the antidote to depression. If, I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't remember anything else, remember this, for, to tell people, the antidote to depression is to have a knowledge of him, and, if you, get, and you get that in his word. You must take the trouble. Here you go, Karen. You must take the trouble to learn it. It is difficult work, but you have to study it and give, it, give yourself to it. Uh, the tragedy of the hour, it seems to me, is that people are far too dependent for their happiness upon meetings. And I'm assuming he's meeting just church services, right? This has been the trouble for many years in the Christian church, and it is why so many are miserable their knowledge of the truth is defective. So one thing I wrote down here in the margin, 
true doctrine produces true happiness. Uh, fluff, right, or emotionalism, it, it'll produce a, a fun high in the moment, but then, but then when that high is gone, you're going to be in, in the real lows, you know? Uh, it's like a roller coaster uh, of emotions. And, and if you think about all these churches that they, you know, they, they'll, they'll be a mile wide and an inch deep as far as their, their teaching and their theology and their doctrine. And, you know, it's all about feeling good and, and whatever else. Well, they, and they have rock bands or whatever, smoke machines and all kind of stuff. And, and they may put on a really good show on Sunday mornings and, and have, and have a, lot of, a lot of fun for that hour. But, but what about all the other hours in the course of the week, you know? And, and the people that are just, they're, they're just pursuing those emotions of that one hour high, uh, they're not prepared to deal with all the assaults and all the doubts and all the anxiety and all the depression that's going to hit them in the face in the middle of the week. Um, but how you, how you get prepared, how you get tough, um, is, is by spending time learning the Bible's doctrine, right? Learning Christian doctrine. All right, more advice, more medicine for dealing with uh, doubts, um, spiritual depression, and, and I think this is helpful, and we're almost at time, so we'll be quick. Uh, he says to refuse afterthoughts, all right? Uh, refuse afterthoughts. And, and so I, I think what he's getting at this here is, um, you know, when Peter got on the water, uh, he shouldn't have started to think, oh, man, what, what, what did I just do? Right? You know what I mean? Like, like he, shouldn't have, he shouldn't have looked at all the, the big wind and the waves and think, oh, I'm about to drown. Because uh, that's, that's an afterthought, right? He made a good first step. Uh, he followed he following Christ. He believed Christ could do this. But then he had, he had that doubt creep in. And so refusing afterthoughts. Um, and so he says this, <clears throat> how often is our trouble due to the fact that we will go back, right? Um, it's kind of like the, the children of Israel. Why don't we just go back to Egypt <laughs> where we had it so good? Um, it is the essence of faith to refuse afterthoughts. And so, you know, don't, don't spend, I don't know how else to, just, to explain this. Karen, you got anything on this? Just yes. like, he yeah. Was saying, um, you know, you have to take the bull by the horns. I like it. Take the bull by the horns, you know, yeah. And you have to say, I know who I am in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I know that um, even if I don't succeed, yeah. I, I, I'm still going to be okay. Yeah. You know, even, even if things don't go like, you know, like I want them to. Right. I'm going to be okay because I know who I am in Christ. Right. I don't rely on emotions. Right. One day you can feel as high as you can, the next yep. day you may be below. But you, you can't think like that. You have to say, that's why it's good starting out the day is saying, I know who I am in Christ. I know who I'm, I'm in Christ. Do everything I can today to serve him well. Yeah. And, and not have a, not spend too much mental energy worrying on, right. on all these afterthoughts. What you know? Yeah, I'm trying to think of of some other examples. Um, okay. Yeah, there you go. Moving here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. I led you here for a better life. That's great. Yeah, I I was thinking here lately I've had some doubts on whether purchasing this house was a great decision. Um but but as I was out mowing the other day, I mean and the same principle applies, like don't Randy, you're, you're in it. You already made the decision. You can't change it. 
so make the best of it. And, and once I started reminding myself of the, the good of the property and, and the neighbors and, and, and how my boys are going to have a lot of land to play on, and, and um, I, I, I came back, right? Okay, this is going to work out, even though may not have done some steps in the right way. God's going to take care of me here. Um, and so I, I like that. It is the essence of faith to refuse afterthought. So uh, don't, don't paralyze yourself by analysis. I like that too. All right. Um, last thing here. We can conquer our doubts by looking steadily at Christ and not looking at them. Right? So we conquer our doubts by looking at Christ and by not looking at them, at our doubts. The way to answer them is to look at Christ. Uh, The more you know of him, his glory, the more ridiculous your doubts will become. And, man, that's that's great advice for um, just when, when we're... I don't know, we hear things, we watch them, we read something, and we're like, huh, you know, and doubt, whatever, whatever kind of doubt it is, it starts to creep in. Just, just turn your attention to Christ. Say, God, I believe, help my unbelief, you know. Um, and one final word from Martin Lloyd-Jones, and I love this, and we go back to Peter. It says, Jesus will never let you sink. Right? He's never going to let us sink. Um, and, and Peter cries out, Jesus, save me. <laughs> right? Is that what he says? Uh, yeah, Lord, save me. And, you know, it's interesting. Jesus saved him physically, but also his soul, you know. And, uh, and so, and, and we... As Christians, we've cried out, Jesus, save us. And when all is said and done, even if we get killed, <laughs> he, he's not going to let us sink. And so that's a really comforting thought. And, and that's another great thing to remember if we are struggling with anxiety, depression, things like that. Thoughts, final thoughts, questions, comments? Amen. Yeah, remembering what he's done. Amen. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Anything else? Uh, there's one thing I've learned in the past few weeks because I've been studying the Bible about the law of God. The law, the law of God, what God has given man is already the law of sin, what it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Praise God. Are we focusing on the bad thing or are we focusing on Jesus? It's where our focus is. Yeah, where our focus is. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Amen. Well, good. This was fun tonight.
So, well, let's pray and then we'll be dismissed. Lord God, thank you so much for these saints. Uh, give them a great uh, Wednesday night. Bring them all back here on Sunday. And uh, we love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.